Number five, Matilda Tule. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to my question is to the Minister of Finance and us. What will the impact of the proposal to my protected Schedule 4 land be on the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the proposal itself will have no impact on the New Zealand economy, uh, but should the government follow through on the process and remove some land from Schedule 4, then I would expect that successful mining on that land would have the same impact as successful mining does on any other land, and that is uh, create jobs for New Zealand families and create, create wealth for New Zealand so that it can provide better public services uh, and a better community. Point of order. Point of order. Sir, this, the, the question is very specific. The Minister is using weasel words to avoid answering it directly. The issue here, the order. question was order. specifically order. about mining on Order. The member will resume her seat immediately. And cease to interject. Now, if she reads the primary question she laid down, she'll see what impact, what will be the impact of the proposal to mine protected Schedule 4 land be on the New Zealand economy. I mean, that, there's no way there can be a precise answer to that. It is basically seeking opinion. And, and the, the member knows that when she seeks an opinion, uh, that the answer will never be that precise. And so I invite the member to ask a supplementary if she has one. Supplementary question, Mr. Minister confirming, or well, has the Minister sought any advice as to the economic impact of mining in Schedule 4 land on the revenues to the Crown? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not uh, familiar with whether uh, any assessment of economic impact has been broken down into term, in terms of revenue for the Crown. Uh, but what I can reassure the member is that the government is committed to lifting our economic growth because that's how we get better jobs and better public services. And we're quite happy to have a vigorous discussion with New Zealand about some of the more challenging trade-offs uh, that we need to make to achieve that. Okay. Today. So is the Minister confirming for this House and the New Zealand public that he has sought no advice as to the impact of mining on Schedule 4 land on income, royalties, taxes or jobs on either the mining industry or the tourism industry? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that's a different question from the one earlier, which was about the impact on revenues for government. There has been there's some pretty well-established work uh, being done on the wider economic impact of mining. And, of course, the Minister of Tourism is interested in the impact of tourism. I might point out that the Minister of Tourism recently opened a new uh, visitor centre at the Martha Mine on Coromandel because the growth in tourist numbers is so, so, um, so fast that they need a better visitor centre. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How can the Minister have confidence about any impact on the New Zealand economy when his own Minister of Tourism said in this House that he sought and has no advice on the impact on the tourism industry, and his Minister for Energy and Resources doesn't know whether the value for just one mining proposal will be $1.5 billion or $4 billion? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the, the member's dealing in a series of hypotheses, and we can all debate uh, who has a better hypothesis than someone else. Uh, what I might say is that the impact of mining on the Dock Estate approved under the previous government uh, appears to have been positive when that mining has been turned out to be successful because it provides jobs because it provides jobs for New Zealanders uh, and the decline in tourism the decline in tourism in recent years has not been due to mining on the Dock Estate it's been due to global recession and a high exchange rate material today has the minister sought advice as to the economic impact of international newspapers and the criticism of New Zealand, like The Guardian, when it said that the clean green Kiwi brand amounted to, and I quote, a shameless two fingers to the global community in the face of a dirtier reality. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, look, there's a few newspapers who reflect the 
uh, traditional practice of the Greens, which is to advertise to the world that New Zealand is nothing like as positive a place as all, almost all other New Zealanders believe it is. But that's just the way that that's just the way that the Greens do business. We don't worry about the economic impact of it. We're getting on with growing our economy, providing jobs for families, and better public services. How can the public have confidence in, uh, Nash, in the finance minister when he isn't interested in the economic impact, as he just confessed to this House, and he isn't interested in the fiscal impact of international condemnation on a $20 billion a year tourism industry? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, um, as Minister of Finance and as an interested New Zealander, of course I've got an interest in uh, what other people say about us. I'd have to say that a, a couple of leader writers in, in two different, one article in two different newspapers uh, have been a lot less combined negativity than the Green Party is about New Zealand, about what a dirty place we are, about how no one cares about the environment and about how we'd be much better if there was no economic growth. I don't agree with any of that and we're getting on with the job of proving that you're wrong. How can the New Zealand public trust his management of the New Zealand economy when his government is on one hand trading off a known $20 billion a year tourism industry against who the hell knows what? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, we... Um, don't deal in those kind of generalities, uh, and I don't think anyone's suggesting that that the tourism that the tourism industry is being the whole tourism industry is being traded off on one or two other items of economic growth. There's been a vigorous discussion about mining. Tourist numbers are rising, particularly from Australia. They've been going up quite rapidly, and we're looking forward to a very positive tourism. Um, season through, through the winter. It's all part of the government's attempt to grow the economy, provide sustainable jobs for families and improve our public services. Yes. Question number six, the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question